Praise the Lord. Glory to his name. God is good. His mercies endure to all generations. Amen. Our God is a good God. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Dominique. Glory. Amen. Just going to share with you just a few minutes. Glory to God. I believe that we are. I believe we have a little time to share with you a little bit. I know that. Uh, God bless you, uh, David. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you all. Thank you all for joining us today. I know that you could be doing a lot of things, amen, but you have come to be with us and to uh, be strengthened, to be encouraged, amen, glory to God. We are, we have a, a we have a lot to be thankful for, folks, a lot to be thankful for. And I just want to encourage you, no matter where you are in life, no matter what you're going through, you have a lot to be thankful for. Amen. You have a lot to be thankful for. Yeah, why don't everybody just share it? Everybody that's coming on, just share this. Just hit that share button. Amen. And share this message so that uh, other people can see and hear and, and uh, get involved with this this time because I'm going to be praying with you guys in a minute and I know there's a lot of people that need prayer if you have friends that you like to get involved with these you know that need prayer go ahead on and get them involved get them involved call them up and say hey you need to you need to tune in pastor Larry is on and he's going to be praying for us hey man I'm going to, I'm going to minister to you a little bit today because uh for because I know there are a lot of people are going through uh, things in their bodies right now. I have a good brother, I mean, that was attacked in his body and his health. And uh, and I was at the hospital this morning with, with him and his wife, amen. And I went and prayed for him. <laughs> and uh, I'm telling you something, I'm telling you, God is so good, God is so good. I just talked to him a few minutes ago and he said, Pastor, you blessed my heart when you came to the hospital and he said you just don't know what that meant to me i feel a whole lot better because because you came and prayed with me i feel a whole lot better see he gave god the glory for that he gave god the glory for that and so that's what we're about we're we don't want we don't want the glory we don't want the credit we just want to be servants we just want to be a doer of the word amen acting on what god has given us and just sharing with you what thus said the Lord. Amen. And so I want to thank you all for joining us. Let's go ahead on and pray right now. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. We thank you, Father, that you've allowed us this opportunity to shed a new outlook on your word and that you are helping us to understand and that you're helping us to glean the principles and apply them to our lives that we will see know and understand that all things do work together for good and for those who are called according to your purpose and father we thank you and we praise you and we give you glory lord for what you're going to do because your people are praying. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. But I'm going to be, I'm just going to share a little bit with you for a minute. Because I know that, you know, a lot of people are hurting right now. There's, and I know you, you may have some loved ones right now that are that are going through some, some things in their bodies. Amen. 
Pray for Kirby. Amen. Okay. Well, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray for, for Kirby right now. Amen. People, just join me right now in agreement that God would touch Kirby right now. Just everyone just come in agreement with me right now in the spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I sense the prayer of agreement right now. So let's pray. Let's release our faith right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come against every demonic force that is working against this young person, this person, Father. And God, we thank you, Lord God, that your, your, your word has already gone forth. You said in Psalm 120, 120 verse, verse 7, that you sent your word to heal. So, Father, we believe that your word has gone forth already, and it will not return unto you void, because you said it, Lord God. You said your word would accomplish that what pleases you, because you bore our sicknesses and you carried our diseases, and by your stripes we are healed. And so, Father, I release your healing power right now in Jesus' name. I release your healing power right now in Jesus' name. Well, glory to God. Amen. Receive that. Amen. Well, that's what we're going to be talking about today. I don't know. See that that you you right on you right on target because that's what God has placed in my heart to share with you today. Because there's many people are going through uh, physical changes, and God wants to touch your bodies. God wants to heal you. Amen. God wants to touch you. He wants to set you free. He wants you to experience His goodness and His mercy. Thank you, Jonelle. Amen. Glory to God. We love you too. Amen. God bless you. Amen. And so we are here today not for not not to uh, take uh, anything of ourselves and make you uh, to receive what but we're here to bring you the word of God and that you have the opportunity to open up your heart and receive what God is saying to you. Because you see, I can't be where you are at, and be right here at the same time. But God showed me in his word, because see, I used to be very sick. I used to be very sick. And, and I was in a place where I didn't have any money. Then, and there was no doctor. Amen. There was no doctor for me to, uh, you know, even if I wanted to go to a doctor, I, I didn't have the money to pay him if I, if I went to one. Amen. And so what I did, I was lying in my bed and I was crying. Because I was, I, I lived alone at that time. I was single, and I lived alone at that time, and and I uh, and I and didn't have nothing. And and I was laying in my bed crying, and God spoke to me. And he said, "Get up and read your Bible." And so, folks, I got up in obedience to the Lord, and I opened up my Bible, and my Bible became my Bible opened up to Mark chapter chapter 16 so i'm going to take you to mark chapter 16 today amen because this revelation that god uh gave me i'm going to share it with you i'm going to share it with you and if you can believe it and if you can act on the truth of this word you will see that god word is already been made available and it's residing in your heart and what god is expecting out of you and me is to activate that word to activate that word amen and so as we pray today because i'm not I'm, I'm gonna be praying again i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna minister to you a little concern this this word then I'm going to pray with you, and I'm going to release my faith with you. I remember I got I, I got some, a, a couple of testimonies that I can share with you about this message that I'm going to share with you today. Amen. Because, see, for a long time, this is all I taught on. Yeah, especially, you know, I, I had a special service that all I did was teach on healing. And people was coming from different churches, and they were being ministered to, and they were being healed. Then they will go back to their church, amen. But and there were people. I mean, people come and got healed of AIDS. People got people got healed of of depression. People got got uh, demonic spirits cast out of them. I mean, people came to be free, and and God used us 
at that time, my wife and I, God used us to set the people free. And so we are, so we, we're walking in freedom. Amen. We're walking in freedom. And, and we want to see all of you walking in freedom because this is God's will for your life. This is God's will for your life. God wants to see you free. Amen. He wants you to experience his goodness and his greatness today. So today is your day. Are you ready for your miracle? Amen. Are you ready for your breakthrough? Today is your day for your breakthrough. Amen. And so in Mark chapter 16, in Mark chapter 16, I'm, I'm here in John. Let me go to the book of Mark. Amen. There we go. Mark chapter 16. If, and I want to start reading with verse number 15, because this is where, this is where that I, I was instructed to start when I was going through that period of, uh, of, of, of pain and, and agony and, and no help to be found nowhere. My, I could, I couldn't go to, I couldn't go to my brother. I couldn't go to my mother. I couldn't go to my, my sisters. I mean, I couldn't go to, I couldn't go to, I couldn't go to no one because they didn't have the answer. And so all I had was my Bible and I was lying in my bed and I was believing God for the answer. Yep. Mark chapter 16. Verse, starting verse number 15. Amen. Now, notice this, people, this is something that you can apply yourself. That's why, that's why I'm going to share with you. You don't have to run and act. You don't have to look for someone to pray for you. You have God's word in you. And God has obligated himself to his word. God will confirm his word with signs following. Amen. And so, and so in verse number 15, it says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You see, and, when, and this was right when I was first called to preach. Now, folks, that's been a while. I, I'm, I just turned 60 years old. So that's been a while. That was been, that's been a little over 30 years ago. Amen. A little over 30 years ago. Amen. And so we see here that God, is, that God is saying, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Well, when God called me, I was sick. I mean, I was so sick when God called me to preach. And so I had a, I had a legal complaint. <laughs> I had a legal complaint. So I began to, I, I says, God, you want me to go preach? Do you want me to go stand up in front of your people, ball over in them, not trying to preach to them? I'm, and I'm I'm hurting like I <laughs> I began to I began to tell God you know talk to God about my situation and so and so uh, I I never been into a, a regular service where they was teaching on healing and so the week prior I had visited a church in Decatur Alabama where the pastor was teaching on divine health and healing and uh, and I. And I went to that service, and when I left out of the service, I walked. I walked in the service in pain, and I walked out of the service in pain. I'm gonna say it again. I walked into the service in pain, and I walked out of the service in pain. Why? Because I did not understand what they were saying or what they was talking about. But eventually, eventually. It began to dawn on me because I, when I began to read myself, I began to see the truth that God wanted me to understand. And so he says, so he says in verse number 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved and he that believeth not shall be down. You see, the word will go forth. You can believe the word of God and you can be delivered from your sickness. You can be healed from your diseases. You can, you can be free from your infirmity. Amen. You can believe it and receive it, or you can not believe it and be down. It's up to you. I, you know, God is not forcing His word on anyone in this day, and He's and He's not gonna He's not gonna make you open up your heart and receive His word. Amen. He's not gonna make you open up your heart and receive His word, because you see, God is He's already given you everything that you need to to 
uh, received his promises today. The promises of God for you are yea and amen. And I don't care what country you are in. I don't care what nationality you are of. I don't care what culture you are from. Amen. I don't care what ethnic group you are in. Amen. It, it doesn't matter. It don't have no effect on the word of God. All God is looking for is someone that will take his word and believe the word. Amen. Take the word and believe the word. So in Mark chapter 16 and now verse number 17, notice what he said in verse number 17. He says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. See, it's very important that you believe the word of God that you're reading. Because if you don't believe what you're reading, it's not going to do anything for you. It just it it could be it could you could be doing just as well by reading a comic book, amen, a, a science fiction book, amen. But in order for you to benefit from the Bible, you got to understand the Word of God. You don't you you don't even have to you don't even have to really truly understand what he's saying. All God is asking you to do is believe what he has said. Simply believe what he has said. Amen. It's not about whether or not you understand it all. Who who does understand it all? No one understands it all. That's why we've been told to study to show ourselves approved. A workman under God needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. No one understands it all. So we can't tell you to understand it before you can receive it. We can tell you, believe it. We can tell you to believe it because this is what the Bible says. The Bible instructs us to believe the word of God. Amen. So it says in verse number 17, and these signs shall follow them that believe. But now, if you are a believer and you believe in God, that God is going to touch your body, and you believe in God for healing, you believe in God for a manifestation of His grace, oh, glory to God, you know, His grace is sufficient. And He has extended His hands toward you. So you are in a good place at the right time, and your healing, no matter what kind of sickness that you are going through, we serve a God that still works miracles today. And God wants to work a miracle for you. How many of you know that today could be your miracle day? Today could be your breakthrough. Today could be your, your day when you will experience God's goodness on your behalf. Amen. Because the devil, he's out to steal, kill, and to destroy. He's trying to steal your health from you. He's trying to steal your joy from you. He wants to steal your peace from you. But glory to God. The God that we serve, he is able, folks. He is able. Y'all need to go ahead and share this. Hit that share button. Share this message. Amen. Because God, the God that we serve, he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Amen. God wants you to simply believe the word of God. Well, pastor, I don't know. It, it's so much being said about the word of God. Some people, you know, they talk about the word of God so much. Well, don't listen to what the devil is saying about the word of God. Listen to what God is saying about the word of God. Amen. He wrote the book. Amen. Through holy men that he have a, that he anointed. Amen. The book was written by divine origin. But I'm telling you, God ordain this book for you to have a, a blueprint to life. This is your blueprint to life. Amen. Are you tired of being beaten up? Are you tired of the trouble coming your way? Are you tired of the enemy trying to take advantage of you, trying to trying to cause you to, to lose out on the best that, that God has for you? Amen. Are you just so fed up with life status quo that you're looking for uh, answer to, to 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 the problem that you are facing. Well, I want you to know something: that the God that have called you out of darkness, He is the same God that can deliver you. He is the same God that can heal you. He is the same God that can set you free. He's that same God. There's no shadow of turning in Him. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. The same God 
that delivered the children of Israel out of the out of the land of Egypt and brought them out into the wilderness for 40 years they wandered in the wilderness look what happened to those that were complaining when they brought them out of the when they brought them out of Egypt look at what happened to those that were mumbling mumbling and and complaining when he brought them out of Egypt what happened to them amen the earth opened them up Op the earth opened up and swallowed all of those people that was uh, uh that, that came against the man of God it, it all of those that was complaining all of those that had their heart still set on what they had left behind you see so many people want to move forward but they still stuck on what they left behind how can you move forward when you still when you still uh, uh thinking about what you have left behind sometimes the thing that you left behind is more better by forgetting about those things that you left behind because if you cut if you constantly think about those things that you left behind it's going to draw you back into bondage it's going to draw you back into bondage the children of israel when god brought them out of egypt they start mumbling and complaining and dathan want to take it upon himself to turn the people heart away from god and to go back into egypt where they come from you know what that mumbling and complaining that murmuring and complaining caused the earth to open up and it took all of those complainers all of those that was against the will of god and they all went into the belly of the earth when the earth opened up and they were seen no more they were seen no more amen so let us be careful about complaining and let us just simply believe the word of god notice what he said in mark chapter 16 and verse number 17 again he says and these signs shall follow them that believe that believe now notice what he said now in my name these signs shall follow them that believe in my name amen now notice what he goes on to say they shall cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up, verse number 18, they shall take up serpents. And if they drink in any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Now this is the part you need to underline in your Bible. Underline this phrase in your Bible. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Underline that. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now go back up to verse number 17 and and underline this part and these signs shall follow them that believe underline that part underline it in your bible because you need to remember this you need to remember this amen verse number 17 and these signs shall follow them that believe well what sign are you looking for what sign are you looking for look at verse number 18 they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover so who's doing who's who's he who he referring to is he talking about the apostles? Is he talking about the prophets? Is he talking about the evangelists or pastors or teachers? No. No, he's not. He's talking about you, the believer. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Amen. So he's not talking about the prophet. He's not talking about the apostles. He's not talking about the evangelists. He's not talking about the evangelists or teachers. Even though they can do the same thing, but he's talking about you as an individual. Because a lot of times we're in places that there are no apostles around us. There's no prophets around us. There's no vengeance, pastors, or teachers anywhere around us. And we are in a isolated place and we are in so much pain. We're hurting and we don't know what to do. We don't know. We don't have no one we could call on. The battery go down on your phone. You can't call someone and ask them to agree with you. Folks, you need to understand the word of God for yourself that you can apply the word of God on your own behalf. On your own behalf. God showed you right here in verse number 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe, amen, in my name. In my name. Amen. Aren't you a believer? Don't you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Don't you believe that he came into this earth to destroy the works of the devil? Amen. According to 1 John 1 8. Amen. If you believe that, then you don't have you shouldn't have no problem 
believing what I'm sharing with you right now. Because you are the believer that God is referring to in this verse. You are the believer. You are the one that he's referring to. So if you are sick and you are hurting, oh yes. If you are sick and you're hurting, you hear me, Misty? If you're sick and hurting, glory to God, that he's talking to you. He's talking directly to you. I was so sick. I was hurting. I didn't have no money to go to the doctor. I didn't have any insurance. Now, I have all of that now. I have insurance. I have. I, I even have a little money now. Amen. I can use a little more. So don't, y'all can just, if, if the Lord uh, uh, put it on your heart, you know, you can, you can help the brother out a little bit, you know. But the thing about it is that I didn't have nothing. I didn't have nothing. I was poor. Didn't have nothing. But when God, oh, hallelujah. I was lying in my bed in Fish Pond, Alabama, back off into a cotton field in that little block house, two-bedroom house. I was sitting in that, laying in my bed, crying like a baby and I heard the voice of God said get up and read your Bible I got up and I opened up my Bible to this particular section of scriptures and I began to read it and I began to read it then uh, and then and then I read verse number 17 verse number 18 I saw something very interesting I couldn't get away from it I just kept reading it over and over and over verse number 17 and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any daily thing, they shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And I kept reading that over and over and over. Then I then I read on down to verse number twenty. He said, "And they went forth and the and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following." Now, when I saw that God was com confirming the word, Amen. Now that really put the icing on the cake. So my job in 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 this whole deal was to simply believe what I was reading. Simply believe what I was reading. And the Lord was there to confirm what I was reading. He was he was there to confirm what I was reading. And oh my God. And and and, and when I and I just read it over and over and over and over and over, then all of a sudden. All of a sudden, it just it just like a coin dropped into a slot machine. It just like went, went from my head, dropped into my spirit. Then the light came on. I said, oh, my God, God, you're talking to me. I am a believer. You're talking directly to me. And, and, and I said, and then I just laid my Bible down. I laid my Bible. I was so excited. Folks, you got to understand, when God spoke to me, I was in such pain. And I was crying. I was crying. I was like, I was just like a little baby, and I was just crying. And God, and God spoke to me, and I, and I, re, and I was reading the word. I was reading it over and over and over and over and over. And God spoke to me, <clears throat> and then I said, "Oh my God!" And then all of a sudden, it turned on in my spirit. It came alive in my spirit. You understand what I'm saying? It came alive in my spirit. It came alive. Then now, and now I'm not just reading it, but now I'm experiencing it. It's just like that word began to speak back to me. How did it do that? I meditated upon the word by reading it over and over and over and over and over. Amen. Then all of a sudden, as I'm reading it over and over and over and over, it went from my mind into my spirit. Then all of a sudden, the light came on. The light came on in my spirit. And now it's more than just word. It has become, it's become revelation knowledge. It's no longer just, uh, it's, I'm not just now, I'm not, no, I'm no longer just reading. I'm experiencing what I'm reading. Amen. Because the word of God, folks, is full of life. The word of God is full of life and health and healing to all our flesh. Amen. I'm going to say that again. Because you see, when you meditate upon the word, you give the word the ability to reproduce, to reproduce itself in your heart. Amen. You give the word the, the, the ability to reproduce itself in your heart. 
How is he going to do that? By you reading it over and over and over. Sometimes it might you might have to read it two or three days for for you can get the, before it turn on in your spirit. Amen. But you don't stop. You get you don't you don't stop until it does. Because once it turn on in your spirit, the devil can't take that from you. The devil can't take that from you. Why? Because it's been given to you by God. It's been given to you by God. And when God is given you, when God is given, when God give it to you, you I mean. You can just sit back and relax because it's finna come to pass. It's about to come to pass. And I was just sitting there and I was reading that word. I was just reading that word. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devil. They shall speak in new tongue. Because you know, don't you know that sickness and disease? Don't you know this stuff is a is is from is is a is an attack on your body? Maybe because of some dumb sin that you have done. Amen. That you open up the door for this enemy to come in and attack your body. Amen. Or it may be that the devil uh, had found you so faithful to God that that he want to come in and try to uh, get you to turn away from God. Amen. By causing you to, to experience a little discomfort in your body. Amen. Remember what he told Job? What God? What, what the devil? What the devil said about Job? If you take your hand off. It was the it was the devil said to God about Job. If you take your hand above him, you lift your head from around him, Amen. I can make him curse you to your face. I can make him curse you to your face, Amen. And so Job, Job, he was he was not doing nothing wrong, but he was being tested, and God gave permission for him to be tested. You may not have done nothing wrong. You may not have you might have done everything right. And you see, sometimes your sickness is come not because you did something wrong. It could be because you've done everything right. Amen. And so now you, 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 your, your character is being tested. Your, your, your character is being tested. And God is going to see what's truly in your heart. Amen. That's what he did for Job. Job's character was tested, and his wife came to him and said, you just ought to curse God and die. And he looked at that woman and said, you foolish woman. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And so we have to understand that when you are sick and when you are in pain, you don't always have to run to someone. And the one you need to run to it's the one that's all is always available to you or for you. And his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Amen. His name is Jesus. Because see, when I was sick, I didn't have no one to run to. I didn't have, all I had was my Bible. And I got up and started reading my Bible. And 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 let me tell you something. The revelation that I got from this word, let's let's can I read it to you one more time? Can I read it to you one more time? Let's start at verse number 15 one more time. And all the way down through verse, through till we till I get done. Okay, verse number fifteen. This is Mark chapter sixteen for you that are just joining us. This is Mark chapter sixteen, and verse number fifteen, because you see, I know that a lot of you are sick, and you you have uh, family members that are sick, and you don't have to uh, try to find someone to come in agreement with you. You just need to come in agreement with the Word of God. Amen. You the one that need to come in agreement with the word of God because God has already given you all the answers that you need concerning your health. Amen. And so we just have to come in agreement with the word of God. So it says in verse number 15, it said, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He verse number 16, and he that believeth and the baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. See, God is not going to make you believe his word. If you believe his word, It'll be well with your soul. But if you don't believe his word, your soul will be condemned. And it won't be God condemning you. It's going to be your own doing because you refuse to believe. It's not God condemning you. You damn your own self when you refuse to believe. Amen. So in verse number verse number 16 again, he that believe in their baptized shall be saved. He that believe not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Notice what he said. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Amen. See, you got to believe the word of God. Now, 
He didn't say you have to understand everything. This is not what he said. Well, Pastor, you don't know. I, I just don't understand how all that works. You don't have to understand how it all works. All you got to do is believe it. If God wanted you to understand it, if everything, he'd have told you, I, he'd have told you, to, I want you to, I want you to, to understand this, and then I want you to believe it. No, that's not what he said. He said that these signs shall follow them that believe. He didn't tell you to understand it first. He only asking you to believe it. That's all he's asking you to do is believe it. Amen. Is believe it. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Notice what he said. In my name shall they cast out devils. Because if you're a believer, then you have authority to use his name. Because see, sometimes sickness and disease are, is an attack of the enemy. And you walking in divine authority, knowing that you are a child of God. God has given you his ability to declare his word. Amen. And the enemy, which is the devil and his demons, don't have power, don't have no power over you, no more than you allow them to. No more than you allow them to. Amen. So he says here in verse number 17, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Folks, that is the most powerful scripture that I have read in a long time. All the word is powerful, but this right here to me is, it just put the icing on the cake. Why? Because this is the revelation knowledge that God spoke to my heart that delivered me from that sickness and disease 25 years ago. And that sickness has not been able to come back on me since. You know why? Because I I've, I've, I've found out that God didn't put it on me. It was the enemy. Amen. It was the enemy. And so I began to uh, understand what God was saying. So what I did, I began, when, when my heart, when it dropped, when it dropped from my mind into my spirit, all of a sudden the light came on and I understood what God was saying. And I and I and I laid down my Bible and I said, Father, you not you not you didn't tell me that I have to call for the elders of the church. You didn't tell me that I have to uh uh call for the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, or teacher. You said these signs shall follow them that believe in your name. And I said, Lord, I'm a believer. And my body is sick. Notice what I said. I am a believer. And my body, which is the temple of the Holy Ghost, is under attack. It is sick. Amen. And so you said in your word, these signs shall follow them that believe, and they shall lay hands. The believer shall lay hands on the sick, and they, and they shall recover. Amen. So now, I have been given the responsibility to lay hands on the sick. Excuse me a minute here. Amen. They want to shut the door down. And so God has given me, God has showed me that I can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Amen. So what did I do? What did I do? I, I laid my Bible down and I held out my hand. I said, Lord, here, here are some hands. And I was so sincere. I said, my body is sick. And you said, these signs shall follow them that believe they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You didn't say who hands God. I, I mean, I made it clear to him. I, I made it clear to him. I said, God, you re see what it says right here? The believers shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You did not specify who hands. I made it clear to God. Amen. Because I didn't want there be no misunderstanding between the word and what God is saying. And I wanted my own heart to understand what God was saying. Amen. And so I made it clear. And I said, God, my I, my body is sick and I have some hands. And I and I and I said, in the name of Jesus, I laid my hand on my body. I, and because this is the area that was hurting, my stomach area. I laid my hand on my stomach. I said, in the name of Jesus, I lay hands up on my stomach right now, and I rebuke this pain. I rebuke this ulcer, and I command it to leave my body right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord God. My body is healed. 
every organ of my body function properly in Jesus' name. And Father, I now raise my hand and I said, Father, I thank you and I praise you for it right now in Jesus' name. Glory to God. I begin to praise God and I begin to thank God. Folks, and I, I used to have to take a bottle of Melanta. I used to have to drink a half a bottle of Melanta in order to have any kind of relief. A half a bottle. Now, that was a lot. That was a lot. Amen. And then... And, and and then had to take them Zentag seventy five on top of that, amen. And and so and so it it was it was it was a miracle for me to even to even be able to 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 hear what the spirit of God was saying to me. I was in so much pain; it looked like the devil trying to dull my ear, my my spiritual hearing from hearing the word of God, amen. From hearing the spirit of God. And so what? I, and I laid my hand on my body, and I and I cursed that sickness. And I command that sickness to get to leave my body. And I said, devil, you are a liar. Get off me now in the name of Jesus. This sickness is not sent by God. And I don't have to receive it. I don't have to allow it to continue. In the name of Jesus, I receive my healing now. Thank you, Father. I lay hands upon the sick. And you said that I shall recover. And I thank you. And I just begin to praise God for it. And folks, within seconds, within seconds, my body has stopped hurting. I had no more pain. And that's been 30 years now. And I haven't had no more pain, no more pain, no more pain. Amen. And I had migraine headaches. I had migraine headaches the same way. Amen. Migraine headaches. Someone, you might be right now suffering with migraine headaches. I mean, I applied the same principle. Every time I'm sick, I apply the same principle. I don't allow, when, when I feel a symptom coming of a cold or flu or something, I apply the same principle, the same principle. God, you said, lay hands on sickness, shall recover. I know what you said in your word. I believe it, Father. Now, Father, I lay hands upon my body. I lay hands upon my, my, my facial for my sinus in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord God, that I'm healed right now. Every germ and every virus try to touch my body, I command it to die instantly and leave me alone right now in Jesus' name. I don't have to receive it. This has not been sent by God. And I rebuke it. I don't receive it right now, Father. I thank you. I receive my healing. I receive my healing. Amen. I am the healed and the devil trying to take my healing away. And I don't, and, and I refuse to let it go. Glory to God. So you got to understand that God wants you healed. God wants you healed. But you got to want it just as bad as God wants you to have it. You have to want it just as bad as God wants you to have it. Amen. Because you see, if you don't believe it, you're only hurting yourself because you're refusing to believe the truth. This is not a lie. This is the truth. God cannot lie. This is the truth. Amen. You can lay hands on the sick and it shall recover according to the word of God. And, and I had those migraine headaches. I applied the same principles to my, to my migraine headaches that I used to have. And I lay hand upon my head. I said, God, here's some hands. I have a migraine headache. Here's some hands. And I lay my hand upon my head. And in the name of Jesus, I rebuke that migraine headache. You have no power over me. I command you to go now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for it. And I begin to praise him. I begin to praise him. And that migraine headache left me. And I never had another migraine headache since. Not one. Not one. That was one time we were riding down the road. My wife and I, we were driving down the road. We were riding down the road. Then I, I sensed the devil trying to put a headache up, trying to put a headache on me. <laughs> and I just turned my head to the window and I started talking to that to that demon. Amen. Because I knew it was a demon. Because God don't put God is not gonna put no headache on me. And I knew it was a demon. And so I turned my head toward the window as I'm driving. And I said, in the name of Jesus, get off me right now. Get off me right now in Jesus' name. My wife looked. She said, honey, what's the matter? Who are you talking to? And see, my wife is a mental health counselor, so you got to understand. She thinks, when you see somebody talking to you, she thinks you kind of, kind of something going on with them. And so, <laughs> and so I said, honey, it's okay. And so I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just taking care of a little business over here. So I turned my head again. I turned my head again. I said, get off me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Then, then all of a sudden, I feel the relief. Amen. Then I, then I said, honey, it's okay now. I said that then I told what I was doing because I didn't want I didn't want when when you when you begin to deal with these situations, you don't want no negative. You don't want nobody coming to you with negative uh, words. Amen. You don't want nothing negative coming for coming against you when you start ministering, when you start applying this word to your life. 
You want to get into a place where it's just you and the Lord. You and the Lord. Amen. Because your friend, your friends, your brother, your sister, your mother, your father, they see you, they see you doing it. They're gonna think you're crazy. So you need to get where you could where you won't be criticized for what you're doing. Get in a place where you can just be, just be you and the Lord. Amen. You and the Lord. Amen. And you just and you just pull out your heart to God. God, I believe your word is true. And I'm standing on your promise, Lord God. You said in the book of Isaiah that you bore my sickness, you carry my diseases, and by your stripes I'm healed. God, you said you sent your word to heal. Father, glory to God. I believe that I receive my healing right now, Father. And you said that I should lay hands on the sick and they shall recover if I believe it. So, Father, I believe. I believe. Therefore, I lay hands upon my sick body. I lay hands upon my sick body. And, Father, I rebuke the pain. I speak to every organ of my body, and I command them to function properly in the name of Jesus. Devil, you have no power over my body. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Now, you take your hand off me right now. You symptoms, you lying vanities, you go now in Jesus' name. Father, I release your healing power to flow freely into my body. What the devil is meant for evil, Lord God. God, you'll turn it around for your glory. I give you glory for it now, Father. I praise you for it. I thank you for it right now in Jesus' name. You got to... I mean, you just gotta, you just gotta become so serious about what God is doing, Amen. And then you might your 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 spouse or your children or whatever may be going through something. Well, they may be in too much pain that they can't pray for themselves, that they can't pray for themselves. You can apply the same word and use it toward your spouse or toward your children, Amen. You can use the same word toward your spouse or toward your children. Uh, toward anyone, as far as they're concerned, Amen. Because you see, you are the one, you are the one that the the Scripture is going to flow through. The power of God is going to flow through you because you're the one that believe. You, He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. So you're the one that believe, and because you are the one that that are believing, the power is going to flow through you, through you. You hear me? What I'm saying? The power is going to flow through you. My wife, she used to be under so many attacks. And let me tell you something, I, I had to apply this on her like every week. Every week she would come crying, laying out on the couch crying because of headaches and stuff. And I and I and I and that made me just start teaching this over and over and over and over. And God began to work. God began to work. Now she don't have those headaches no more, folks. She don't have them no more. Amen. There's a, a man that go to my church. He 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 got him a job being a truck driver. This I'm gonna take a little a little side journey here. He got him a job being a truck driver. He and uh, he got in his truck and he started he started learning how to drive with a very loud and noisy truck. Amen. And he and he and he started having headaches while he was driving the truck. And uh, and he began he, he remembered what I've been teaching. He remembered what I've been teaching. And he there driving the truck. <laughs> he driving his truck. Then all of a sudden he got that, that headache come on him. And he was and he said he he's a pastor. He's a pastor. I remember what you taught me. I remember everything that you said, and I and and I and I lay a hand upon my head, and I talk to that thing. I command to get his hand off me in the name of Jesus. And he's a pastor. Before I could get before I could get done praying, it was gone, and I never had another headache since. He said, and he said, I couldn't wait to call you and tell you about it. Amen. You see, it's very practical. This is very practical teaching that I'm giving you. You see, you have the answer in your hand. The answer is the word of God. It's the word of God. Stand on the promise, regardless of what it looked like, regardless of what you're going through. God will confirm his word with signs following. It says in Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 13, I think. Let me just turn it and see. Because in Jeremiah, in Jeremiah chapter 1, amen, let me just turn that real quick. In Jeremiah chapter 1, glory to God, here we go, right here. In Jeremiah chapter 1, and it says right here in verse number, verse number 12, it said, Jeremiah 13, ver, Jeremiah chapter, chapter 1, verse number 12, it says, Then said the Lord unto me, Thus hast thou, thus, 
thou hast seen, thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. See, God will hasten his word to perform it. So when we take the word of God seriously, God will hasten to perform his word. Amen. He will hasten to perform his word. And so when we when we understand that, when we see what God is saying, then we don't have we don't have much to be concerned about, folks. We don't have too much to be concerned about. Amen. Because you see, God, see, it says in, in, in the book of Hebrew, chapter 13 and verse number 8, that Jesus Christ, let me see, let me just read to it, verse number 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. So you you are you you in a good place. You're in a good place to receive God's miracle working power in your life. God wants to touch you, Gray. God wanna to touch your family. Jerry, God wants to touch you. There's nothing that God won't do for those that will believe him. You may be somewhere where there's no medical treatments. You may be in a place where there's not even much hope. Receive this word today. Let your hope be established in Christ Jesus, not in man, but in Christ Jesus. The word of God has the power within itself to bring about its own fulfillment if we would only believe it. If we would only believe it. Amen. And that's all God is asking of us is to simply believe. Amen. Simply believe. Amen. So now. I want to take you to another scripture because I want you to see that what I'm sharing with you is it's it's God's word. I'm not give I, I don't want you to I don't want you to think that nothing of me I, everything that I give you is from the word of God. Now, now notice what he said in 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 uh Psalms 1 and Psalms 20 120 No, Psalms 107. Psalms 107. There we go. One oh seven and verse twenty. There we go. Psalms 107 and verse 20. Notice what he said. He sent his word. This is Psalm 107, verse 20. He sent his word. And healed them. Not only did he send his word and healed them. This is Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent his word and healed them. And look what else he did. And delivered them from their destruction. Whew, that's powerful. He sent his word and healed them. And deliver them from their destruction. Somebody's being touched right now. Someone is being touched right now. God, your faith, your faith has, I mean, has 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 come to a, a, a level that you've never uh, operated in before, and you and you release, and God is and God is touching you right now. Receive your healing right now in Jesus' name. Receive your healing right now in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Amen. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Amen. That's for you. That's for you. Amen. And then let's just let's just let's just back it up a little bit. Because you see, we I want to you gotta see this. You gotta see this in order in order to get the full benefits of this. Because you see, there are benefits in you serving God. There are benefits in you walking up right before God. Now notice what it said in verse number in, in Psalm 103. Psalm 103 and verse number one and says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all 
that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefit. Well, God's healing power is a benefit that's been granted to you. Amen. It's a benefit that's been granted to you. Now note said in verse number three, who forgiveth all thine iniquity, who healeth all thy diseases. Amen. This is Psalm 103, verse 1 through 3. Amen. Look at verse number 3 again. Psalm 103, verse 3 again. Who forgiveth all thine iniquity, who healeth all thy diseases. God wants you healed. God wants you delivered. God wants you free. So write it down. Psalms 103, verse 1, 2, and 3. Amen. There you go. Amen. Who satis who redeemed thy life from destruction? There you go. Who verse number four, who redeemed thy life from destruction, who crowned thee with love and kindness and tender mercies. Verse number five, who satisfied thy mouth with good things. Who, who satisfied thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle. Oh my God. Now that's that's powerful. That's powerful. Amen. That's powerful. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. I can I take you to another scripture before we go? Can I take you to can I take you to three in a row real quick? Real, I'll, be, I'll be quick because I know you get you you ready to go. I'll be quick. I'm gonna take you to three more scriptures real quick. Amen. The first one. Because see, the Bible said, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. I'm going to take you to three scriptures. The Bible said, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Amen. So I'm going to establish, I'm going to, I'm going to use the word of God to establish a truth that you are already healed. That you are already healed. Okay. Now, let's go to the book of Isaiah. Let's go to the book of Isaiah. Let's go to the book of Isaiah 53. Now look at verse number four. It says, three, I'm going to I'm, I'm take you to three sections of scriptures. I'm going to be quick because I know you ready to go. Amen. He said, verse number five, verse number four says, Surely he had borne our grief and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him, quickened, smitten of God, and afflicted. Verse number five. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, notice what it says now, we are healed. You need to underline that. We are healed. That means that you are healed right now. But the spirit of deception causes the uh, causes you to, uh, to think that it's not that you're not healed, especially when you begin to feel pain, when you begin to experience pain and, and discomfort in your body, amen, you begin to think, is this, if, if this is true, then why am I experiencing pain? Amen. See, don't let the pain turn your, your heart away from faith. Amen. Because, see, pain is, is, is not something that's going to, it's not, it's not there to, to help you to stay focused, it's there to take you off focus. It's there to take you off focus because as long as you can stay focused and and not and not give in to the pain, you can you can you can you can walk you can walk in divine health. And God's gonna bag it up, and next thing you know, that pain is gone before before you even realize it. It done gone, amen. And so so he said, in verse number five. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Now, I'm going to take you to the book of Matthew to the fulfillment of this particular scripture that I just read. In the book of Matthew, I'm going to take you. We're leaving the Old Testament now. We're going into the New Testament. Matthew, are you, are you still with me? Amen. 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 Matthew. There we go. Chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. Now let's look at verse number. 
16. Matthew chapter 8 and verse number 16. And it says, verse 16 and 17. And it says, When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirit with his words, and healed, notice what he said, and healed all that were sick. Verse number 17, because this is the fulfillment of Isaiah 53 that we just read. Verse, this verse number 17, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmity and bare our sickness. Himself, talking about Jesus, folks. Himself took our infirmity and bare our sicknesses. Amen. And so when we see that, we can understand that it's already been done. It's already been done. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. That's number two. Now, the third witness is in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 24. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 24. Glory to God. And it says, who is own self, talking about Jesus once again, who is own self, bear our sins in his own body, on the tree. That we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes. Now notice what he says now. Ye were healed. That's past tense. Isaiah, even though it was a prophetic word, was present tense. Amen. And then in Matthew, we see that the fulfillment of that prophetic word come to pass. And now in the book of 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, we see that it's already done. It's a done deal. It's the past tense. It, we were healed. Amen. So why not get in on the benefits of being healed? Where are you sick at right now in your body? Those of you that are sick right now in your body, do yourself a favor. Believe that what I'm sharing with you is the word of God. Believe what I'm sharing with you is the word of God. And I want you to turn your Bible right back with me now to the book of Mark chapter 16. Go back with me to the book of Mark, chapter 16. Now let's read verse 17 and 18 once again. And then we're going to apply what we just learned. Amen. We're going to read it once again. Then we're going to apply what we just learned. Now, are you there? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Mark, chapter 16. Amen. Now look with me in verse number 15. 16 verse number 17 and 18 verse number 17 and 18 mark chapter 16 verse 17 and 18 once again notice what he said and these signs shall follow them that believe he's talking about you he's talking about me amen he's talking about us and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils see he's, he's showing you that you've been given authority over devils Amen. Sickness and disease sometimes are promoted by demonic spirits. So he, God has given you power and authority over them. Amen. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils? They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. It shall not hurt them. They shall lay, they shall lay hands on the sick. Notice what he said. They shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Well, who's the they that he's talking about? He's talking about you. He's talking about me. Amen. He's talking about you. He's talking about me. Now, I'm about to release this anointing. I'm about to release this healing power right now. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you, Father. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Now, I don't know about you, but if I were you right now, I will purpose in my heart to come in agreement with this man of God, talking about myself. If I were you, I will purpose in my heart to come in agreement with this man of God. 
especially if you're sick in your body. I'm coming in agreement with the word of God. And as you come in agreement with me, you're going to come in agreement with the word of God also. I have given you every scripture that you need for this for right now. And you are ready to receive your healing. You are ready to receive your healing. You on Facebook, you on live me, you on, on Periscope, you are ready right now to receive your healing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, raise your hand with me right now. Raise your hand. Glory to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Father, that as these children of God that are listening, as they raise their hands right now, Father, I'm asking you, Father, that you would anoint their hands, anoint their hands to lay hands on the sick. According to your word, God, you said these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils? They shall speak with new tongue. They shall take up serpent. If they drink anything, and shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Father, I ask you to anoint their hands right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, as we lay our hands upon our bodies, where the sickness have come upon our bodies, God, we believe that we will receive our healing and the devil hand cannot rest upon our bodies any longer. That spirit of infirmity, sickness, and disease has to go in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you for it right now in advance. Now you that are sick in your body, lay your hand right now on your body where you are sick. Lay your hand on your body. Don't listen. Don't ask me why. I'm obeying the scripture. I'm giving you what God gave me, how I received my healing. There was no preacher there with me instructing me on what to do. <clears throat> I followed the scripture instructions. And as you follow the instructions that I'm giving you, according to the scripture, you can receive your healing right now. Lay your hand upon your body where you're sick. If you have a head problem, you have a tumor, whatever you have, whatever it is that you have sickness in, lay your hand upon your body. Amen. Lay your hand upon your body. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, you said these signs shall follow them that believe. We are believers, and we are laying hands upon our bodies right now, Father. And God, we know that you hasten to perform your word. And you, Jesus, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. As you did for me uh, 30 years ago, Lord, I know that you can do it right now for these people. Right now, that you instructed me to teach this message to, the instructions to. Father, I release my faith with them for their miracle healing right now. For their supernatural miracle healing right now. In Jesus name. Now Father I release the anointing. I release the anointing right now. There it is folks. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. Receive your healing right now in Jesus name. In Jesus name. I rebuke every sickness. I rebuke every infirmity. I rebuke every disease. I bind you right now. And I take a hold of you. And I pull you off. And I cast you off in Jesus' name. I cast you off of those people of God right now in Jesus' name. Father, let your miracle working power minister to their hearts. And I give you praise and I give you glory for it right now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Amen. So I believe that as you apply, if you need to go back and listen to this again, Please do it again. Listen to it two or three times if you have to, to get the full gesture of what God is saying and what God is doing. Amen. God bless you. Love you too. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you all. Amen. Now, Father, I pray for all the intercessors who have stood in the gap and prayed with us on Thursday and Friday of this week, Lord God. I pray for them, Father, in the name of Jesus, that this weekend, Father, will that we're going into Sunday, Father, will be a blessed day for each and every one of us intercessory prayer warriors. And God, you're going to shower your blessing upon us. Father, we're going to experience your goodness and your mercies. Glory to God. Father, God, the fire of God right now is resting in my hands, God. And Father, the people 
are beginning to pull on the anointing they receive right now, Father. I bless them right now in Jesus' name. God bless you all. I love you guys. Thank you all. And don't forget to join me tomorrow at 1230 Pacific Standard Time for my live church service. Amen. My live church service. Sunday afternoon is 1230 Pacific Standard Time. Please join us. If we're going to be on all networks as we are right now. We're going to be on all networks. We're going to be live. We want you to join us in our church service. God is leading us into a new beginning. So we're going to be ministering on stepping into your new beginning on tomorrow. God bless you. We love you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. God bless you. God bless you, Facebook. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Glory to his name. I'm not sure what you said.